What's up guys, Blame the Game, and welcome back to another video. Today I'm playing an Undertale fan game. Um, so yeah, it's called Under Me, and yep, let's get right into it. Awesome. Okay, so each decision I make does affect what happens. Boy. Boy. Yes. Blanket boy. Now we can start the game. Long ago, the peaceful, powerful race called humans ruled the earth. There were two kinds of people. First, who had determination and had souls of different colors. The colors of the soul was determined by a leading character trait of that person. The most powerful of these were red souls, as they had the most determination in them. And second, who had magic, their souls were white and had very little determination in them. Humans like that often had unusual looks because their souls and bodies were filled with magic. They could have horns, tails, different colored skin, hair, and eyes. Such looks made some of them uh, look more like a mythical creatures than humans. Uh, after some time, people with determination became afraid of magical humans. Some even called them monsters. Any small conflict or fire for, a, for the bonfire of hate and dislike, and one day a real war broke out between the two sides. But the fight was unequal, and the, its outcome was uh, Creator. Preordained, preordained, the humans with determination achieved the victory over those who had almost none of it. Naming the magical humans monsters, the determined ones imprisoned them in a powerful and an under, underground under Mount Ebbet, sealing the exit with a powerful spell, the barrier. Barry had incredible power, it uh, was only the soul who had lots of determination and magic together that could destroy it. But there was no one with such soul in the world. The magical humans lived underground. They had lost faith, their hopes turned into ashes, and so it was for many, many years. Not Evan. 2000 and whatever year. Well, uh, once upon a time, a human fell into the underground. Their name was Frisk. They made friends with all magical humans in the underground. It showed them that not all the people who were filled with determination are evil. Remember, Frisk failed to feed the monsters with a heavy heart. They left the underground and nobody ever saw them again. The monsters continue to live in prison, but now I hope rise in their hearts. I hope that somebody will come and end their suffering. Click here to continue. In this world, everyone is connected with their soulmate from their birth. Soulmate or true couple, everyone calls it differently, but the meaning is the same. It is the closest person in your life. Closer than parents, closer than friends. They understand you better than anyone and will always be on your side. Always, even when the whole world will turn away. Yeah, it's a little weird probably knowing that there's a strange person you're connected with from your birth and someone is destined to you as you are to somebody either. Many will wonder at how I can find my soulmate. If you think about it, it, it could be anyone in the world. It's impossible to find your soulmate just by chance. That's what so-called tags are for. Finding your soulmate before reaching 16 years of age is a Possible task, even if you assume that it's someone you know, you can't absolutely know it until the fateful, that fateful age. 
After reaching 16, a pair of marks appear on the soulmate's bodies. They are similar, but also unique for each pair of soulmates. Only connected soulmates have such marks, and marks have an interesting feature when connected mates are close to each other. Their marks begin to glow and soar slightly, thereby attracting their owner's attention. Uh, however, there are some cases when soulmate can feel his or her loved one before reaching 16. He or she can feel an unexplainable uh, attraction to the place where the other soulmate probably is, and this is the reason which worries me a lot. I live in a small town near the root of Mount Abbott, although town is a pretty big word, it's more like a village. Not much space, everybody knows each other. My parents are not paying me enough attention, but I used to do a lot by myself. I understand that they work hard and have a lot of things to do, but sometimes I think that they are not interested in me. I can't remember the last time we did something together. We don't even celebrate the New Year while everyone else does. Parents say it's just a waste of time, but looking at how happy our neighbors are during this holiday makes me feel sad. Despite my attempts to persuade my mom and dad to celebrate it, even just once, I failed. Is that too much to ask? At least once? I want to feel loved. Recently, I began to feel a strange feeling. Mountain. It attracts me. Is it possible that my desire to go to the mountain and my soulmate are connected? It's weird. I heard stories about magical people sealed under the mountain, but it's just a fairy tale, isn't it? But I started to feel strangely not so long ago. What if my soulmate is somebody from my town, and recently he or she went to the mountain and has not come back yet? I heard that village recently lost a few people that if my soulmate... What if my soulmate was one of them? I winced before of such thoughts. What if... They got lost. What if my soulmate was walking in the woods and got lost? They wandered into the mountain and now doesn't know what to do. So they are just waiting for me in the hope that I will come in and save them. In fact, there is no clear reason to worry, but a bunch of different situations already appeared in my mind. Uh, and each of one was hardly better than the other. I became nervous. There was just one thought in my mind. Gotta go to that mountain. What if my thoughts are real? Yeah, I don't know for sure. But if I refuse to check, it will slowly tear my mind apart for a very long time. Right, I'll go to the mountain. I left the village and went into the forest, where I was walking with the neighbor kids sometimes. Passing through the forest, I came to the path that brought me pretty high. There wasn't, and wasn't anyone around. The only thing I could hear was bird song from the forest behind. So quiet and peaceful, I even forgot why I came here from the start. Going a little further, I found the cave entrance. There were some strange noises from the inside. I was curious, so I took a step into the darkness. I'd never been in a cave before. Uh, and it was very spacious in here, but darker than outside. However, it has its own charming atmosphere. Fascinating. Especially all these uh, stalactites and stalagmites hanging from the cave top and rising out of the ground. I tried to get used to the darkness and keep going at the same time. Suddenly, I caught my foot on something. I thought I was about to fall and hit the ground, but I was wrong. I started to fall down the cliff, which I couldn't see in the dark. It played a role. I felt like my heart stopped, like my whole life flashed before my eyes. I closed my eyes, expecting something horrible. Hard hit. I imagined how my body crashes into the ground. But suddenly, I realized that it was just my imagination. In reality, I feel something soft under me. My head suddenly starts to ache, as I realize I can't move. I can't even open my eyes. Calm quiet. I was laying down for a while until I heard a couple of voices chatting from the distance. Mom, here he is! Oh god, it's true, another fallen human. Uh, I'm just gonna read for mine the narrative. I make sure that it's slow enough where everyone else can read. That would follow along. That's Papyrus. That's Sans. Toriel? Azriel. Sans. I heard last words very badly, slowly fainting away. Finally, there was complete silence. I had a dream. Everything was so bright. I was standing somewhere high, like a mountain. I was looking at the rising sun. There were some people around me. I heard laughter. Everyone was so happy. We talked about lots of things. They said my name very often. But then everything disappeared. 
eyes widened. The first thing I saw was the ceiling. My head didn't hurt as much, so I sat down. I was on a soft bed in a strange looking room. Although I felt something soft, uh, fell on something soft, it was not this bed. The lack of holes in the ceiling proved it, but then how did I get here? I stood up and looked around. The room was uh, done in bright colors and slightly reminded me of my own room. There was another bed near the opposite wall with some drawings above. Further from the bed stood a nightstand with a photo and a large wardrobe next to it. Near the bed, which I'd just risen from, were several large plus toys. I noticed them just now. The room was bright and clean. I was worried I don't know where I am. Uh, I tried to sort my thoughts so I could figure it out, all out, but no dice. After exploring the majority of the room, I stepped through the door and into the hall. The corridor was long and went in both directions. There were two other doors, also a mirror at the end of the corridor. I took to my, I looked to my right and smelled a sweet scent of cinnamon coming from uh, perhaps a kitchen. My stomach growled and I turned right without even thinking. I walked past the stairs leading down and went into the living room. The table stood in the left corner of the room. It was adorned with a, va a vase of dried flowers and surrounded by chairs. Wood was slowly burning in the fireplace near the right wall. I put my palms next to the fire. The flames were warm and soft, but my hands didn't get burned. Weird. The smell of cinnamon wa wafted from the doorway at the end of the room. I took a step forward, but then immediately stopped. A woman came toward, uh, towards me from the doorway. She didn't notice me at first, but after a moment she was looking at me with a surprised look. It was strange that she called me my uh, child. Noticing the confusion on my face, the woman kindly smiled. Hmm. I became calmer because of her tone, but my voice still waved a bit. Uh, who are you? I was amused by the fact that she had, uh, had small horns and big fluffy ears. She looked magical, to say the least. If I'm under the mountain, then all these tales about magical people are true after all. Where am I? My head hurts a little, but I'm fine. Thank you. Dorian Falls. Hmm. My fate? I do. I remember the lines from the book in which I read about it and quietly repeated them aloud. People filled with determination sealed magical humans underground, creating a powerful spell called the barrier. cinnamon became more intense, Toriel realized too. Hi. With these words, she quickly fled to the kitchen. However, uh, Toriel returned in a few minutes. Cinnamon. Butterscotch. I've tried butterscotch in real life, and honestly, I like cinnamon more. I think I prefer cinnamon. It has a very specific taste and smell, but I like it. More than butterscotch, at least. Um, no, probably not. In fact, I love both. I mean, I don't mind butterscotch. It's just I prefer not to eat it. I mean, I'll eat it. It's not my favorite, but I'll do it. Except, decline. Except, I was really hungry, and pies sounded like a good idea. My mother makes uh, bakes pie and I did not even eat pastries at all. But there's such an opportunity, missing it would be a terrible sin. Yes, I'm really hungry, so a piece of pie sounds good. Excellent. Awesome. Toyo ran away and came back with a huge piece of pie on a plate, handing it to me. I nodded and took the plate. Mmm, that does look good. Pie looks very yummy. That smell, I didn't notice. Uh, I already started to drool. 
I ate this piece very quickly and then returned an empty plate to Toriel. Thank you, it was very tasty. Can I have more? eventually came to the gate. I assume this is the gate that leads to Snowden. It wasn't locked, so I went through as Toriel said. Beyond the gate, was a, there was a long dark hall with another gate at the end. The only light I could see, the light shining through the gate. The gate was massive, but it opened easily. I went through, closing it behind me. As I walked out, a cool, refreshing breeze blew right into my face. Did a breeze come from the underground? I don't know. I guess it's magic. Then a layer of snow crunched under my feet. Luckily, I was wearing shoes, not some sort of sandals. There was a straight path and hundreds of trees on each side. I kept following the path, like Toriel said. I quickly came to a bridge with wooden bars hanging from a platform and crossed it. I went to a small meadow, and there was almost nothing except the observation post and a strange-shaped lamp. Very strange-shaped. Near the post there were a few people talking about something. The highest of them said something to the other two. I now realize I forgot to ask Toriel's friend's name. I don't even know what he looks like either. How can I give him this cloth if I don't even know uh, who I'm looking for? Ah, silly me. I decided to approach people next to the post. Maybe they know who the friend is. So, hey, sorry, can I ask you something? Two of them looked at me with a weird expression. The third one turned, but immediately froze in awe. I don't like this at all. I don't like that, but okay. Human, are you awake? I don't like that. Now it's my turn to be surprised. He knows me? Yes. I don't like human papyrus. The confusion resolved itself. There's no doubt he was Toriel's friend. I don't like human papyrus. He's scaring me. I was struck by how tall he was. I wonder how old he is. Scarf. Oh, right. Here. He gave him the fluid cloth, which pretended to be a scarf. He took it and immediately started wrapping it around his neck. After a few swift seconds, he ended the scarf and at the back of the spine. That does look like a scarf. The scarf was longer than him in full height, which left me in awe because he, his skeleton is pretty tall. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Papyrus. The Great Papyrus. Perfect. Papyrus? Question mark. Nice to meet you, Papyrus. I am Blakey Boy. Well, I'm not really anywhere right now, so I might just head back to Toriel's house. Sure. Papyrus seems friendly. I hope I can trust him as much as Toriel. Deep down, I feel like I can. It's common for magical people to act like that on the surface. Only a few people would like to help a stranger in distress. 
Cars let me further down the road. I notice that it's very long and it's almost always going one direction. Soon I saw a meadow with an ice cold lake. Right where the road widened was another observation post, but this one looked more like a big doghouse. We walked closer and stood in front of the building. The observation post itself was empty. There was almost nothing inside except for one poster. However, there was some kind of reception bell on its surface. I decided to move to the right, but suddenly someone jumped right out of the post, seriously scaring me. That's also scaring me. I don't like that. I jumped from fright. He blinked. Seeing Papyrus, Doggo jumped over the top of the post and moved closer to us. expression and smiled. He winked and just stood there, not making a sound. I didn't really know what he was up to, so I just watched. Doggo tensed. Pyrus wasn't responding. Hmm. Pap stretched out his hand and patted Doggo in the head. Ah! Doggo's face was beyond any description. I couldn't resist and began to giggle. Papyrus smiled widely. Mm-hmm. Doggo was clearly unhappy, but not angry. He leaped back into his post, and he put a few dog treats in his mouth. Okay. Onwards! Papyrus said goodbye to Doggo and then stepped towards me. I already stopped laughing, but a smile refused to leave my face. Yeah, thanks, Papyrus. Let's go back to the ruins. We came back fairly quick. Whether it was due to the fact that I already knew the environment, or due to the fact that all the way uh, we talked about all sorts of things with Papyrus, I don't know. But after a little bit, we were already walking upstairs into Toriel's house. We went into the living room, I sat down on a chair and looked at Papyrus. Ooh, very cold! I remember the trick and, with Doggo and giggled. It was fun, I liked it. Very cold though. Nah, I'm fine. Little do you know, I made a fire. That's good. Papyrus, I baked a pie. Do you want to take a piece? I ended up reading their lines again. Dang it. door slammed and a guy about my height came into the living room. Save. Empty slot. Return. Nice. Just do the scrap video. No. Oh. Go here.